Live from Massachusetts. Here is your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org. Silicon Angle TV is covered on the ground at the VTUG Fall Forward 2014 here at beautiful Gillette Stadium. Joining, uh, to talking to the users at the event, and for this segment, we've got Mark Lampson, who's the director of IT for Westerly Public Schools. For those of you who don't know, Westerly, Rhode Island, is in uh, the, the South County, uh, western part of the state. Mark, uh, thanks for joining us. Tell us a little bit about your role and a little bit about uh, IT at the school system. Okay, thanks, Stu. Thanks for having us. We're here today at the VTUG to launch the K-12 Special Interest Group for K-12 Education. I wanted to thank Chris uh, for having us here. We've attended many VTUGs in the past and the VM world, um, and we just wanted to drum up some excitement around K-12 uh, education and some of the IT challenges that K-12 uh, shares with other markets, and then some of the things that are unique to K-12 and education uh, just for us. So we wanted to talk about both of those things. Okay, great. So uh, yeah, it, it, great to have uh, the, the communities that can pull together. Education, of course, has some uh, very specialized, uh, you know, challenges from uh, you know budgetary use that usually uh, gets some uh, you know price advantages. Hopefully, from some some of the communities. Uh, wh wh what are some of the, the highlights that you got out of the panel? Um, we enjoyed the panel. I, I brought three colleagues with me from K-12, and we talked, uh, had a lot of interactivity with the audience because we didn't want to, you know, kill them with a thousand PowerPoint slides. So we really just gave our little spiel at the beginning and then turned it over and made it more interactive for questions. We took questions on BYOD and policy and some challenges like that. Uh, about the uh, challenges of infrastructure, um, in particular power, the greening of the data center, and, and just the, the infrastructure issues that older school buildings might have when you're moving to an environment where you know, you're trying to give every student a laptop or um, something because this is what's expected for them to move from high school into college and careers and be ready to collaborate and contribute. To, to their career or their college experience. Sure, okay, can you share a little detail? Uh, what, what's the experience of BYOD been in your district? It's been very proactive. Um, it's been positive, I should say, and um, students and staff really find that rather than being an impediment and something they have to do sneakily behind their back, that we're open to it, and it, it teaches them to use technology responsibly to you know, do either their jobs or their learning, which is, is a plus and a benefit. So we would rather encourage responsible use rather than to try to police inappropriate use. Yeah. So. I, I mean, we, we always say uh, no matter how much you lock it down, they're usually going to find out <laughs> how, how to use it. it. It reminds me a lot in enterprise, uh, you know, companies are going to do stealth IT. So if IT can't enable ways to get the main things done, so is is IT really an enabler for, uh, you know, d delivering services now in, in your district? Yes, we found that um, if as much as we can enable IT and enable the learners and the teachers to collaborate and, and also be compliant about the rules because we have to look at all those pieces, then that turns it into a win. And one of the things we've done is we were an early uh, alpha and then beta partner of a storage company, Data Gravity, um, who's actually here today. And they have a really unique play on storage where they add value uh, by saying they can have insight into the data that they store, which before storage has sort of been dumb. And you, you would say, okay, the filing cabinet's purple and it's got seven drawers and 10,000 files but what are the contents of that? And by being able to crack in and see those contents, we can make actionable decisions that will improve student learning and outcomes. So we can say, look, this kindergartner had perfect attendance. Let's celebrate that now and encourage that rather than waiting until they might have a truancy issue in middle school. All right. Uh, yeah, Data Gravity, definitely one that uh, caught a lot, got a lot of attention, great buzz at VMworld. Uh, talk to what led you to, uh, how did you find Data Gravity, and, uh, you know, you know how, how's the kind of alpha and beta been so far? What would you say to your peers if they're looking at it, you know, how, how could they uh, benefit from this? Right. Well, I've, I've brought a few peers with me that helped me launch this group, and I've uh, taken a couple of them over to see my friend Dave Siles at the booth, and um, I have a joke where it's, uh, you know, 
six degrees of Kevin Bacon, it's like five degrees of Dave Siles in IT. So everybody knows somebody that knows him. And uh, he brought forward the opportunity and said, you know, do you want to give us feedback and input and, and be an alpha? And I was like, sure. So it's been, they've been really a great uh, partner for us and a great opportunity for us to see what we can find out about our data that we never had insight into before. All right. Uh, sounds like a you know interesting fit for for education. Uh, are you leveraging uh, you know analytics and uh, leveraging your data more? Is that a general trend? You know, what do you think of the whole big data uh, discussion in IT today? Right. Well, I present at VMworld, and I, I had a slide at, on my slideshow where I show the big Hadoop elephant, and I'm like, look, I'm never going to be the big Hadoop elephant shop, and I don't want to be, but I want to see and have insight and governance over the data that I do store and that I'm responsible for. And I think there's more and more uh, press to have all sorts of institutions, including K-12 education, have data governance policies and procedures in place so that PII doesn't leak out. And I think their solution, as well as some others, are helping enable IT to do that better. All right, so, so Mark, it uh, sounds like you're very active in the communities, uh, not only at things like the VTUG here, but uh, d through your special interest group. How do you recommend that you, really your peers get involved? How can they get involved in your uh, special interest group? Where, where would you point people to? Um, well, I have a blog, blog.k12virtualization.com, and uh, maybe I can send you a link or something. We could cross-link to one another. But I think just uh, coming to events like this and dialoguing with colleagues and peers, networking, that's what it's all about. So um, there's all kinds of resources, and if you don't know something, just shoot somebody an email, and they'll, they'll help you out. So. All right. Well, Mark, always appreciate giving back to the community. Thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us here at the VTUG Fall Forward 2014 event. I'm Stu Miniman, c covering uh, the user conference here uh, at Gillette Stadium.